And Rick will also provide um, his slides through SlideShare. So you'll be able to look at all this information again. So you might feel a little um, inundated with a lot of great examples, but we promise there'll be venues for you to play back. So um, I'll also send a, a follow-up email and be sure to check back over at edsocialmedia.com for a blog post recap. So um, if you're not familiar with today's presenter, if you have, haven't ever had the chance to see him in person, he is a fabulous presenter. So make sure you get out and see him in person at some point. We're lucky enough to have him to join us today for this webinar. Um, he's a, a, a very professional in the school marketing and admissions space. Um, and without further ado, Rick, I'll turn this over to you and get it going for you. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Maddie, and it's great to be here with uh, you all this afternoon, wherever you are located. I am located in uh, sunny and warm St. Petersburg, Florida. And as uh, Maddie mentioned, we're going to take a look at lots of great ideas during this uh, really brief webinar this afternoon as we think about how to use the web to inspire word of mouth. And I want you to get to know me just a little in a quick uh, way here. Just uh, spent 28 years of my life in Michigan. I'm a graduate of Michigan State University. That's where I worked on my uh, my PhD in educational leadership. Wrote my dissertation in Starbucks. In fact, if I work with your school at some point along the lines, um, I will need Starbucks coffee to get me through it. In fact, I worked with a school in San Diego recently. The admissions director brought me Starbucks every morning. So it was wonderful. This is my family. We're Tampa Bay Rays fans. My wife, Janine, my two boys, Caleb and Benjamin, 7th and 8th grade. And we love roller coasters. This is the top thrill dragster out at Cedar Point. We went there this summer. Great roller coaster. Launches you out at 120 miles an hour. You go straight up uh, 410 feet and straight down all less than 20 seconds. That's what it's like to lead the marketing enrollment effort at a school. You're all always going up and down and being shot out really fast. And I work with schools across the country helping them with their marketing and enrollment effort. You may be interested in my blog. You can find that on my website. And I provide ongoing coaching to provide direction for um, school leaders in their marketing and enrollment effort. And what I find with schools is that word of mouth is that number one way that prospective families hear about your school. Think about that old commercial I remember it growing up when I was in the 80s. You remember that uh, young model that would be on the screen, complete with 80s hair, talking about she told two friends about Fabergé organic shampoo with pure wheat germ oil and honey. And then she concludes by saying, you'll, you'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends, and so on and so on and so on. And you see that magnified. Well, that creates a memorable impression. You know, I still remember that commercial. You can go find it on YouTube as I did and replay those memories from back in the 80s. But it talks about word of mouth marketing and the power of telling someone else about a particular product, or in our case, our school. So as we look at our schools today, it's about word of mouth. Every focus group that I've ever conducted with parents, they talk about how they first found out about the school and it's through someone else's mouth. So they've heard about it through a friend, someone at their church or their school or in their neighborhood. But web is a close second because that's where a parent is going to go look and find out more about your school. They might hear about it from a friend, and then they're going to go and conduct that Google search or look at your website, scope out your Facebook page, and uh, read the reviews on great schools, and really find out more in depth about what's going on at your school. I love this definition about word of mouth marketing by Andy Cernovich. It's giving people a reason to talk about your stuff. And that's, that's essentially your school and who your school is. And then making it easier for that conversation to take place. And that's where we focus in on the web and web marketing. Because the web in and of itself is a tool so that we can provide the opportunity to tell our story and make it easier for that conversation to take place. A great resource for you is Andy Cernovich's book on word of mouth marketing and also their website, wordofmouth.org. Highly recommend that you check that out. But we're interested in really this whole inbound marketing area and all the different sites that are out there that we can use to be able to tell our story about our school that's going to help to inspire that word of mouth. And you look at some of the differences here between inbound and outbound marketing, and just look at the very bottom. You see the difference between inbound is focused in on content. Whereas outbound is about those ads and those slick ads. 
Inbound is focused in on stories, things that are real, that you can engage with a story about someone else, where outbound is more focused on that, that slogan that we spend lots and lots of times and dollars coming up with, but we really need to focus in on that content. So we look at what's important today, and it's about word of mouth, it's about web, and we look at the bottom here, it's the power of telling a story and telling a story about our school. You know, we have the opportunity through the web to be able to communicate anything and everything we want about our we want to tell about our schools. And we can really tell the story about our schools through our parents and our students or our alumni and our faculty and, and really provide this engaging, compelling picture and portrait of who we are as a school. And that's, I think, one of the weaknesses that I see in our schools today. We need to really use the web and all its power to tell our story about our school. And that's going to help to inspire that word of mouth. Because as I'm out there talking to someone uh, about your school, um, I'm going to reference those things that I've heard about on the web as well as my own experiences. So that's where we want to be direct and be able to communicate stories about our schools on the web. Because we live in a story, we relate to stories, we listen to stories, and we can see ourselves in that story. So think about that prospective parent. We want that prospective parent to see their child in the stories that you're telling. The stories of your alumni, the stories of your students, the stories of your faculty in the classrooms that are going to be impacting their child's lives. Stories are part of who we are. After all, we don't tell st uh, slogans about our grandfather or how your parents met or even how you were treated in a restaurant. We tell stories. And I think that's what our marketing effort needs to be comprised of, especially as we look at the web in a way that we can use that to inspire word of mouth marketing or WOM, WOM for short. So you think about the different types of stories that you can tell and it needs to focus in on people and uh, how they are impacted by your school. So think about your faculty, think about your alumni, think about integrating real stats about your success for college placement, but communicate that in relationship to real students and how they've gone on and been successful. And I'm going to show you lots of examples about how other schools have done this as we think about nine web strategies to inspire word of mouth. So I've spent a lot of time just searching, searching the web, just coming up with examples of what other schools have done to inspire word of mouth through the stories that they're telling. And I want to share some of that with you this afternoon so that it might inspire you to take one of these ideas and implement it on your own website or your Facebook page, your own marketing effort at your school. So number one, I think we need to tell alumni stories. Here's an example of Berkeley Prep and on the home page of their website they have this map of the world and you can click on the map of the world and you can see all these dots that represent stories of their people, um, their students, their alumni around the world and I think it's a great visual to showcase some different stories of alumni making an impact, making a positive difference as this example is displayed before you. Uh, think about filling up that map uh, with all kinds of dots representing the alumni around the world. Here's Cranbrook and on their website they have a lot of great features that are going on here but I wanted to highlight this one. Cranbrook Schools Alumni Shaping the World One Story at a Time where they're sharing specific stories of their alumni and the impact that Cranbrook made on their lives and what they're doing in the world today. Chapin, you look at the home page of their website down at the bottom, life after Chapin. So that becomes a central focus of telling the story of what happens after you graduate from the school. Dana Hall, I love this on the home page of their website. Dana Hall Unbound, click here for new stories and you're able to go in and you read about four different unbound short books that aren't printed but they're published on the web and you can read about this one, A Brief Study of Life After Dana Hall and it profiles two of their graduates and the life that they've experienced after Dana Hall. Throwback Thursday posts are a great way to feature your alumni and showcase them on Facebook. You can go and you can scan in an old photo from a yearbook and you can tell the story behind that photo and ask alumni to get involved and identify who's in the photo or even tag 
those who are in the pictures, and that really helps to connect your alumni to the school. I love this approach at St. John's Prep in their own words, and it profiles uh, their graduates, their graduating class. Um, they each tell the story of the impact that St. John's Prep has had on their lives and what their plans are for college. And that's a great way to communicate um, the investment that a parent will make in a, in a school and the impact that it will have um, on their potential, on their child. And you can hear the stories and the differences as to what they're pursuing in life. Tell student stories is number two. And these are just some examples that I found out there on some websites of schools focused in on how schools are telling the student story. So you see at Lawrence Academy, and you'll see this as a common example at several of the schools that I'll show, they're focusing in on four different students on the home page of their website, and uh, you can actually move them along, and you can see different aspects of their student experience. And you can read about it, you can go to a, a page, like in this case, you can read about her experience with residential life or leadership, you can back up and find out about athletics and dance. It just helps the, the student story to be able to come alive, and especially in schools with the, the students, the older they get, the more influence they have on a decision uh, for where they go to school. It's important that they can picture themselves at your school. Another example of highlighting a, a student on the home page of a website, and you can click on the student, you can read more about their story, same as in this case where they're focusing on we are the titans and these are our stories and you can click and you can hear more about um, this student and uh, you can click on the video vignette and you can listen to her particular story about her experience at Wilbraham and uh, Monson Academy. Same in Commonwealth here. They feature several different students and faculty on their homepage of their website. You can click on one of the students. You can find out about Celine, and you can listen to the video vignettes that are there, and Wells read some of the, the the information and stories that that lets you know about the student, so the school becomes real uh, on their website. Similar approach at Concord, with uh, their focus on telling stories. You just get a feel for how schools are using those different approaches to tell those stories. I showed Dana Hall a few minutes ago and I show this again because I think it's important to see the approach that they take in uh, with different aspects of the school and they're telling this these stories through the lives of a student. And uh, you can read about how Dana Hall loves to see a girl today be a leader tomorrow or Dana Hall thinks you learn more when you learn how to learn. And just great messages that they're communicating through the stories of their students. At uh, NMH, um, doing the same approach with uh, different stories of students featured on their homepage, and you can read more about Nate. So again, the school comes to life. Number three, telling stories about your programs. You know, and, and telling stories about your programs, I think is it's an opportunity to be a little more innovative and creative about how we do that, rather than just providing a list of all the classes or all the, the programs that we offer at our school, we can actually go in behind the scenes and we can tell more about what's going on. So you look at this example from the Boys Latin School and uh, you see featured on their homepage in the spotlight, there's four different stories of different aspects of their school where you can learn about the, the uh, college math studies or the new Smith Hall or the uh, students learning guitar or the Fulbright Scholarship four different aspects of the school but help to bring that school to life off their website. I like this example from Seattle Country Day, Ideas in Motion. And uh, you can go in and you can find out more of the life behind what's happening in the classroom. So you look at this page and you see the first example there, third grade construction engineers and architects. Click on it and you understand the story behind the photo of you know why are these kids sitting underneath this uh, uh, structure that they've created, but you understand the life behind this, this project and the meaning of it and how learning really comes to life and that's what parents are interested in. They want to know what life is going to be like at this school and this helps to bring this, um, this element to life in a story format. Maybe it's traditions at your school and uh, schools have all kinds of traditions and I think those are great stories to tell. 
And so you can see this one example at Old Fields of how they've showcased some of their traditions at their school. Number four, your faculty. Great place to be able to focus in on, in on sharing stories about your faculty at your school. They're the lifeblood of, of your school. They're the reason why um, student, or what students will remember after they're long gone from your school is their faculty that made an impact on their lives. And I love this example from Swickley Academy off their homepage. They have this button here, Meet Our Teachers. And you can click on it and you can read more about their teachers and you hear their stories come to life as to who they are and the impact that they're making in the classroom. Uh, similar approach at M NMH where they're telling a story of the faculty profile section and you can find out more about uh, this one teacher here. Number five, using a blog to generate content to share your story. As we know, blogging is going to drive visits to your website. That's been demonstrated in research by HubSpot. You look again at the example that Swickley Academy uses. Their blog is featured in their homepage of their website and they try to focus in on articles that not only are going to be important and compelling to their current parents, but also interesting to those people in the community that might be searching on a given topic to find out about your school. So you look at this one, can I be successful learning a second language? And that's going to apply to both contexts and that's a great way to communicate an aspect of the school to tell the story about this particular area that might have attraction for a prospective family who's out there. This is another example right at the start of school, three steps to transition your child back into a school schedule. Again, it can apply both to the internal and the external community and it's a great way to use a blog. I love this example at Phillips Exeter, Exeter and they had the Lion's Eye blog right off their homepage of their website where they're telling stories about what's going on in their school. Similar with, uh, with this school, they have a, two blogs, a photo of the day and a head of the school blog off their homepage. Again, it's, a blog is providing an opportunity to communicate content. We know that content rules today and we need to be about that in our web marketing strategy. At St. Luke's School, the head of school has a blog on leadership and learning. So he's able to talk about various aspects of leadership and learning. Here's his September meditation and you also see his Twitter feed showing up on that page as he's trying to engage with his audience and I guess bring, really bring life um, to, the, to the man who's leading the school which often, you know, you think about a head of school, um, he can be somewhat removed from, uh, from the parents uh, and this is a way to help connect them. Uh, to be able to be in front of them through a blog or through Twitter. I love, love this example with Chuck's Corner uh, at Proctor Academy. It's basically a photo blog. And if you go and you check out this uh, blog off their website, you just see lots of engaging photos about the life of the school. And uh, I've seen some other examples where they're using some students to tell the story. Here's an example where they're involving some students, which I think is an important consideration to have that student voice. Here's an example of a trip that students took with faculty members uh, on, a, on a trip and they used the blog format to be able to update and tell stories of their experiences. Um, using student ambassadors to be able to, to tell the story of what's happening in your school uh, I think can be a powerful approach uh, in getting students involved in that marketing communication effort. Number six, tell stories and share photos on Facebook. As we know from our experience with Facebook and even some of the resources that are out there like Dave Kirpin's book, Likeable Social Media, which I highly recommend, I think the number one way that people respond and engage on Facebook are with pictures, with captions and stories. And you look at lots of these posts that I'm going to show you, you know, I can look down through the timeline post on a school's Facebook page. And I just did this with a school this morning. We were looking at their Facebook post and they were all announcements about athletic events. There were no photos and I told them that they were missing the point of what to do on Facebook because we really need to use photos that engage our audience and tell the story of the life of our school. I had one school that uh, they told me the story of a prospective parent who was looking in at their Facebook page. They liked what they saw. They decided to take the next step and they called to take the tour. So you never know who's looking at your Facebook page to get a sense of 
what's going on at your school. So we have the opportunity, as you're seeing with these slides flashed in front of you, to really tell the story of our school through through what's happening. You know, just the day in the life of your school. And you can take photos, you can tell those stories. But I think here, number seven, we need to ask our parents to do something on Facebook. So here's a couple of examples of those couple of schools that I have worked with. Lakeland Christian School, they put this post out this summer. It's officially summer break, but the offices are still open weekday from 8 to 4. We're so fortunate to have wonderful to have a wonderful and fun receptionist in the main office. Click like if you appreciate Miss Penny McCormick. And within five hours, they had 200 likes on this Facebook post. And you think about getting people to engage and like a post, you know, that was a great strategy for them to use. Calvin Christian used a similar approach. They were getting to revamp, getting ready to revamp their hallways and uh, uh, refurbish them. And so they put this post of their current hallway, and they said, if you've ever walked this hallway or would like to see its makeover this summer, click like. And they had 75 likes. And there's a school of about 200 students in uh, the south suburbs of Chicago. Uh, but, you know, encourage your parents to, to get involved and engage in post. And you might even want to ask your parents when they enroll in your school to put a post out on, your face, on their Facebook page that talks about them enrolling their child at Country Day School, whatever the name of your school is, and uh, using that as a way to do some word of mouth marketing through the web to let their friends know where they've chosen uh, to send their school. And I think that could be a great idea. Here's Admiral Farragut Academy, uh, a, a boarding school and day school here in St. Petersburg, Florida, and they were trying to encourage their parents, alumni and, alumni and students, to post their favorite memory while at Farragut. And uh, they had an opportunity for them to uh, win a uh, Kindle Fire gift certificate. Just a way to try to motivate people to share content on the web. Here's Canterbury School, another school here in Florida. And um, they encourage their families as they're on vacation to take photos of Canterbury shirts or license plates on vacation. So you see lots of different posts. Here's a license plate underwater. Um, here's one obviously overseas. Um, and, and you look at all the different experiences and places that Canterbury is showing up. Number eight, use video to tell your story. And I'm a big believer in using video vignettes. The shorter the better. Post them on YouTube or Vimeo, Vimeo or whatever channel. Make sure they feed into your website. You know, ask maybe your parents key questions. You know, what do you like best about your school? And you can see that in a little short video vignette. Do the same with alumni. I've even thought about it would be awesome to have an issue. Let's say you're a, you're a faith-based school and you want to talk about the integration of faith and learning. So why not hear that from four different perspectives, from your, your students, your faculty members, your alumni, and your parents, and have four little video vignettes, vignettes that answer that question. Uh, Madeline just wrote about this uh, example um, on the Ed Social Media blog, and uh, I highly encourage you to, to check this out. And I think it's a great example of using the web to inspire word of mouth. And uh, Assumption um, did a uh, lift up video that's, that's awesome. They've had 45,000 views on YouTube. You can read more about the story of how they created that. Um, go on YouTube and, and type in um, school lift up, and you'll see example after an example of other schools who've taken this strategy. But this is a an awesome way to showcase this. Now you can use other videos to highlight the school. Uh, I do like this video. It's more of the professional type. But what is it like to go to school here at Bentley? And uh, you see these students uh, actually pasting words on the uh, the screen of the video camera and talking about from their perspective uh, what is it like to go to school here. 10 things I love about Deerfield. Again, it's more of a professional approach, but I, I love the way that it really uh, focuses in on 10 things that students love about Deerfield. You might want to use in your admissions section some testimonials of students or why parents selected uh, a particular school, as, as in this case with Delaware Valley Friends. And then finally, number nine, share a photo of the day. And uh, you can think about how photos, as we talked about with Facebook, can really tell the story of your school. And uh, what some schools have taken the approach of doing is to 
focus in on sharing a photo of the day. And here's Brookwood School, and they've created this um, um, BTube and BPod channel where they can communicate videos and photos and captions of the day. Um, we've already seen some examples of NMH, and uh, what they have here on their homepage is a, is a photo of the day. So a new photo gets gets uh, published, and there's a caption that goes along with it that tells the story. Here's another example of a photo of the day uh, showing up on um, on this website here. Again, it just brings life to your school and and uh, showcases who you are in, in more of an interesting, engaging, compelling way. And um, I actually made it. I, I was joking with Madeline uh, before we started this webinar that I have about 100 slides to go through and did that in about 25 minutes. So you probably feel like you've been drinking from a fire hose during this presentation, but I wanted to jam pack it with lots of ideas so that you could at least grab a hold of one that you could take at your school. Bottom line for me is that I think stories is where it needs to be at in our marketing effort, and we need to use the web to tell our story of our school, and that's going to help to inspire word of mouth because as I'm as a parent is out there in the community and they're talking with someone else, you're going to want to make sure that you have communicated the stories of the school. Certainly they're going to talk about their own experiences uh, with your school, but if they hear other stories, they're going to take that and share it, especially if it's compelling. And like the case of the Assumption Lift Up video, um, they're going to pass that on and share that to all their friends and uh, really get that out there about, about your school. So. I hope that this session was uh, helpful for you as you think about using the web to inspire word of mouth. Certainly much more that we could have covered, but I just wanted to, uh, to give you some initial ideas to think about for your school. I'm going to turn it back over to Madeline at this point and uh, perhaps see if there's any questions or maybe you have an example at your school of how you're sharing your story. In fact, we'd love to see your post on uh, the Ed Social Media page or or my Facebook page telling your story of how you're using the web to tell your story of your school. Madeline? Yeah, thanks so much, Rick. That was fabulous. So many great examples in there. I'm writing them down as fast as I can because I think there are some very fabulous pieces to refer back to. So um, one question that came up, Rick, is as you're getting your web um, website set up in a, in a great way, and a lot of these schools have done a really fabulous job of incorporating themes and series, um, once you get that set up, what are then your top maybe one or two social media services that you would direct schools towards next? I, mean, I, I think two things I would direct them towards is um, you know, on their website to, to use a blog because a blog can be a great way to have continual to have content that's constantly changing and then you can use it in a format to be able to tell the story of your school. And then secondly, I would focus in on Facebook. I mean, we just saw that Facebook has one billion users, and that's amazing. So that's the number one social media channel out there. We need to master that. And if you just focused in on um, every day putting a new photo and a caption up, you'd be, you know, headed in the right direction of telling the story of your school. If you could do that two or three times a day, that would be even better. Awesome. And then, Rick, do you um, do you or do you see your schools often taking like those blog posts that they work so hard to create and then distributing them on Facebook as well, or do they do you kind of leave that up to the community to let them post on their own Facebook walls and through Twitter and that sort of thing? Well, I think definitely you need to post it on your school's Facebook channel and all your uh, Facebook page as well as all your social media channels because you want to you want to get that out there that you have a new blog post. And certainly you can encourage your, um, your readers to be able to share it with their friends and even to get involved like Swickley has done by sharing comments and getting involved in that conversation. So it's, it's more than just putting it on the website, but it's actually getting it out there so people are aware that you have a new post. Yeah, awesome. And then this kind of leans to the idea of, you know, we get out into social media and we start posting frequently on Facebook. Um, how do we prevent our social media posts from just becoming noise or, you know, things that just happen in the background that we don't pay attention to? Well, we, do, we don't want to overdo it. So if you're posting every hour, that's going to be too much. Um, you know, if you could focus on maybe two, maybe three at the most 
uh, quality posts. It kind of depends upon your school and the resources you have. Uh, for some schools, it's just going to be once a day. But what I don't want to have on your Facebook page is just noise about all these different events and, uh, like for example, you know, the example I used earlier, this one school who basically was was having their athletic director post in, you know, tonight we have a volleyball game, please come, you know. That doesn't go anywhere. You know, you want to engage them. It would be different if, if he was telling a story about one of his volleyball players and then encouraging his, you know, the people to come out to that volleyball game and had a photo or maybe a little video vignette of, of uh, an interview with that, um, that student. But we want to prevent a lot of that noise in terms of announcements. I don't think that's the right channel to really focus in, in on communicating calendar information to our parents. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much, Rick. There's so much information jam-packed into this half hour. So um, we will make the slides available. Rick's going to upload his to SlideShare, and then we'll create a blog post and export the video so you can also watch the playback um, on edsocialmedia.com. So um, you should be able to recap all of this pretty easily. I'll also send a follow-up email as well. So I'd like to extend a special thank to Rick for thank you to Rick for pulling all these examples together. They're um, very fabulous and noteworthy for all of us to take a look at and see how we can begin to emulate. Um, I also want to thank our webinar sponsors, which are Admissions Quest and Proof, for supporting this event. Um, it's a free webinar series. We have another one coming up on October 23rd with Dan Schur. Um, he will talk about 10 instantly actionable ways to leverage Twitter. Um, so we'll get a little bit more in-depth into Twitter itself um, and how that can impact your SEO. So take a look there. Sign up over on our events page on Ed Social Media. Um, and we also have an in-person event just outside the D.C. area on October 25th over at Sandy Spring Friends School. So if you'd like to join us there as well, I'd love to have you over there. So I think that's it for today. Rick, do you have any other last-minute additions? No, thanks for uh, joining us today, and uh, if we can do anything to help you, let us know. Thanks so much. We'll talk to many of you soon.